Hi, my name's Hethel Vasavada. I'm a cookbook author and blogger at Milk and Cardamom, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make good paneer. First, we're gonna make some fresh paneer with a ton of delicious milk, and then we're gonna use that paneer to make good paneer, which is a really simple Indian dish that has just a few pantry ingredients and vegetables and a great entry dish to make Indian food if you're just learning how. So let's get started with the paneer. So what you're gonna need is half a gallon of milk or eight cups of whole milk. Now you're gonna wanna use dairy milk for this because in order to make cheese, you need dairy milk for that. You need the fat, you need the protein. No other milk is gonna work in this case. This is a recipe that I actually made with my mom quite a lot growing up. Yeah, you can go buy paneer, but using fresh paneer really makes a difference in your recipes. So now that we have our milk in the pot, we're gonna turn the heat on to high and we wanna bring this to a boil. Once I figure out which one it is. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna let this come to a boil and as soon as it comes to a boil, we're gonna take it off the heat and add in some acid. Now typically, now if you're in India, you would use something called alum to help coagulate the cheese. But in this case, we're just gonna use simple old lemon juice. So make sure you stir your milk so it doesn't scorch at the bottom. If you've ever had paneer that's a little squidgy or a little too hard or like you're really chewing at it, it's because it wasn't made fresh. You want fresh, fresh milk for fresh, fresh paneer. So once it comes to a boil, you're gonna take it off the heat. We're gonna add in our lemon juice and what this is going to do is separate the curds and the whey. And then you're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. I like to give it just a quick stir so the lemon juice can get where it needs to go. But don't stir it too much because then you're gonna break it up too much. You kind of want bigger chunks of curd if you can. All right, so now our paneer has been made. And be careful, it might splash a little and it's hot. So just be careful when you're doing this. You can give it a mix if you need to to help the whey get through this cheesecloth. Now don't throw away the strained whey. That's the stuff that's the bottom bowl. It is full of protein and flavor. So what I like to do is freeze it in ice cubes and add it to smoothies or soups. It's a great way to add a little extra protein into your meals. So now that most of the whey is strained away, we're gonna also wash it down with a little bit of cold water. And this helps the paneer from stopping cooking, but also cools it down so that when you squeeze all that liquid out, it doesn't burn your hands. I mean, my mom actually wouldn't do this step. Extremely hot things did not bother her, but I'm soft. I, I need the cold water. And same thing, you're just gonna agitate the paneer a little bit just to help the water get through and strain out. You know, we didn't actually use cheesecloth growing up. We'd use saris, like old sari cuttings my mom would shred. All right, so most of the water is out, and as I mix, it's quite thick. So at this point, I'm gonna squeeze out as much of the water as I possibly can because I want this to be a loaf of paneer. You're gonna gather it and squeeze. And do it gently. If you do it too hard, some of the paneer will squeeze out the holes of the cheesecloth. We do not want that. We don't wanna lose it. So be real gentle and just kinda of give it time. Take your time, be slow, it's okay. We're not in a rush. If you get as much liquid out as possible initially, the shorter time it will take for it to set in the fridge. You won't have to press it for as long. Now what I like to do is kind of shape the paneer into a brick using the cheesecloth. So here's our paneer. Yes, I know it looks like very much like some ricotta. Just use the cheesecloth to kind of quickly give it a little bit of a shape. A little rectangular square. And we're gonna wrap this up again. So you're gonna put a plate on top and then on top of this, you wanna weigh it down with either some heavy cans or jars or even some heavy books if you want. And you're gonna pop it in the fridge and you wanna let this sit in the fridge for at least one to four hours. I highly suggest doing it overnight. All right, so our paneer has been pressed between our plates. So it should be nice and set. It's so set that it's actually stuck to the bottom of the plate. Let's try that again. There is our slab of paneer. So we're gonna cut it into about one inch square cubes and you're not gonna get too fussy. So here are our little cute little paneer cubes. Because you have all that milk fat in the paneer, you don't need to add any oil or butter or any sort of fat to the pan. Now that our pan is nice and hot, we're gonna add in our paneer. And you're gonna let it sit for a couple minutes so that it browns really nice. 
And because this is fresh paneer, you really want to be gentle with it when you're uh, turning them to brown all the sides of the paneer. So use a pair of tongs, or if you're feeling really, really like super chefy, you can give it a little bit of a shake. Most of the sides of the paneer is nice and crisp and caramelized and brown. We're gonna take it off the heat, grab a bowl, and toss our paneer in there gently. All right, so now we have to build our base for our godai paneer. So first, we're gonna heat up our pan with a little bit of vegetable oil. You wanna use vegetable oil, not olive oil, because you need a little bit of a high smoke point. So we're gonna add in about a tablespoon, two tablespoons. So the first set of spices we're gonna add in is whole cloves, some cumin seeds, a bay leaf, and something called asafoetida or hing. Now, the flavor profile of asafoetida is actually a bit more like allium. Think like onions, garlic, scallions. We're gonna add in our cloves. We're gonna add in our bay leaf and our cumin seeds. And then for asafoetida, a little bit goes a long way, so you really need just the tiniest pinch. You don't need all that much. Like a bottle of asafoetida in my house will last me like two years. So we're ready for the onions. And we can turn the heat to medium at this point. We're gonna saute these onions for about five minutes or until they get translucent and soft. So our onions have been sauteing, they're nice and translucent. Now it's time to add the garlic, ginger, and chili. And in order to do that, first things first is you gotta lower the heat. So here I have some minced garlic. And this is the point where your house actually starts smelling like you're making Indian food, because you start smelling all the aromatics. And you're only gonna cook this for about a minute or until it gets a little bit more fragrant. You don't wanna cook this for too long. And when it comes to the chilies, feel free to add more or less depending on how spicy you like it. All right, so our garlic, ginger, and chili is in. So now it's time for my dry spices. You wanna add it while it's still in low heat so that they don't burn. What I'm gonna be adding in is a little bit of garam masala. It's a mixture of different spices, usually warm spices. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of turmeric, red chili powder. Again, you can adjust that according to your taste. Some cumin powder and coriander powder. We're gonna saute that for about 30 seconds in the hot oil. And it's just gonna help the spices bloom, get fragrant, release all their flavor and oils. And we're gonna add in our tomato sauce. We're gonna crank our heat up back to medium high so that we can really cook down the tomato sauce. You can use canned tomatoes or you can use fresh tomatoes that you pureed at home. Either one works. So while the sauce is cooking and simmering down, and reducing, we are gonna blister some bell peppers that we're gonna add in later. So let me swap this guy out and add in the pan. Hold on. And it lost it. So now that my pan is blaring hot, we're gonna add in our bell pepper. And we're gonna let it sit until it gets nice and crispy, a little bit charred. So half our bell peppers are charred. I'm gonna give it a good quick stir about two minutes away from being done. You can see some beautiful blisters, a little bit of charring on them. It's gonna add that kind of grilled flavor to them. So I'm gonna swap my pan, get my sauce here. You can see it's gotten nice and thick. We're gonna add in the bell peppers that we just charred. And then we're also gonna add in the paneer that we made. And you wanna make sure all the paneer and bell peppers are coated in that tomato base. And we're gonna cook this down for another five minutes for all the flavors to really get melded, for the paneer to take on a little bit of that flavor from the tomato sauce. Our tomato has reduced, it's nice and thick. It is clinging to every paneer cube, to all the bell peppers. Now the last final bit is to add in kasuri methi, or dried fenugreek leaves. And the way you add it is you take the dried leaves in your palm and you crush it to help release all the aromas and fragrances and flavor and you add that all in. So fenugreek kind of has a earthy, um, herbaceous aroma to it, but a lot of Punjabi dishes um, finish their recipes with a little bit of fenugreek. Before I serve this, I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt, and then we're ready to go. All right, we're gonna serve this up with some garlic naan. You can totally serve this with paratha, roti, or even rice if you'd like. It's so messy, but it's so good. So let's give this a try. And grab a little bit of naan. We are gonna use our hands. These are the best tools we have. And get a little bit of paneer. Mm. The creamy paneer with the tangy tomatoes and all the spices, it just pairs so well together. 
and it's just such a cozy dish. If you're gonna try making Indian food, definitely try making kadai paneer and always be sure to make your paneer with real milk.